Notice. The public are reminded that requisition took effect from November the 16th, from which date compensation is calculated. They will not, except for special reason, be disturbed in their possession until December the 21st. But from that date, the Admiralty may, at any time and without notice, enforce their right to immediate possession. It is therefore essential that every person should leave the area by December the 20th. That was about six weeks before we had to move out. And um, I think it was, I think the deadline was supposed to be November the 11th or something like that. It was in November, any rate. We had to move out. Um, all our parents were upset, obviously, but I mean, as kids, we thought it was lovely to uh, <laughs> to be going somewhere else. Um, it was like going on holiday for us, really, but um, there you go. A lot of removal lorries and uh, people moving their furniture and things like that. The army were coming in and taking a photograph of us. They said it was to, uh, they told me that it was to send back home to show people what we were doing for them back home. They had me walking up through the village and pretending I was going into a house. I was the last, last one, last of the children here um, and uh, I was all on my own so you know I was just wandering around the village. I can remember my sister, she went up to the shop. This is how we knew it, because it, it didn't come out until the last minute sort of thing. And my sister went up to the shop and she came back and she said to mum that uh, we were all going to be evacuated. And I remember my mum saying to her that she was talking nonsense. <laughs> so uh, that was how we, we knew it in the very beginning. But... Um, then there was a meeting in the village hall uh, to explain everything. I can remember as plain as day, I was in the kitchen at home and um, uh, we used to go up to the roundhouse, the shop, the roundhouse, and um, during the week, um, you know, mother would send us up for a bag of sugar or whatever and uh, but the main shop was always done on a Saturday and my sister Margaret went up to get the you know the week's groceries and pay the bill and she came back down and she said uh, oh they're saying up the shop that all the villages are going to be evacuated and my mother said to her, Margaret don't talk up such rubbish that just couldn't happen how could the farmers you know sort of get all the cattle, everything had to be moved and she said, you know, you're talking rubbish. But I mean, in six weeks, it was true, we were out like. My father was working on a manor farm for the Bowden family. And it was my first term at the grammar school in Dartmouth and November. And I remember coming home from school, school and my father saying, we're going to have to be evacuated. And I thought, well, that's ridiculous. We had had evacuees from Bristol. They had gone home because it was considered then safe enough. And I thought, well, this, this isn't ridiculous. Uh, and Margaret, my sister, said she didn't know why she had to be evacuated because she'd been done. She'd got a mark on her arm to prove that she'd had, you know, vaccinated. And 
then meetings were held in <coughs> in Slapton, Stokenham, and Black Orton Church, not in Street Church, where people were invited to go along, and the Admiralty would tell people what was, not exactly what was about to happen, but that it was a fait accompli. Everyone, 3,000 people from the area, had to go. My father was a farm. You see, you had all the animals. And everyone else was in the same boat. You couldn't ask anybody to help you because they were all having to leave. Um, and then my father, you see, he had to get somewhere where he could put, take some animals, which was very difficult. And then they had a sale at Cambridge Market for people, you know, this area to sell off some of their animals. Well, of course, because there were so many, the prices were, well, it almost give them away, you know. They lost a lot of money that way. The farmers themselves had a, had a lot to get on with, yes. I mean, they didn't only have their stock, which most of it had to be sold up, actually. And uh, all the... Well, you, you know, everything that was in the fields, they, they wanted them to take all that they possibly could, but uh, it must have been a bit of a nightmare for them. Of course, lots went and they never came back. I always think it, it really spoiled the village as far as uh, locals were concerned because there was uh, such a lot of people that didn't come back. Oh, we had six weeks to go. Yeah, 50% of the business was still outside the area because father used to have his van and travel to B Sands, All Sands, Prawl and places like that. So what happened then, uh, the big fridge we had in the shop that was sectional and that was taken down and taken out to East Prawl where a chap called George Jarvis at Well House had a large garage. So we assembled this fridge in there and went to plug them in and of course they didn't have mains electricity so that was a wasted effort. <laughs> I suppose when you think of it it's like Kathy and myself have often said really nobody had that much in those days I mean like in our house you know there was the table and chairs there was no television no washing machine you know no cooker I mean we had a lidstone stove that mother did all the cooking on she used the the um, lidstone the front of it to warm the irons and um, do the ironing and um, we boiled the kettles on it you know but so there was not that much to move like it would be in this day and age really for the older people it must have been really very very traumatic i think for me probably it was oh new place and then people said but we've all got to find somewhere to go, and the men have to find work. They did provide lorry sometimes to help take it away. But that was worth taking it away, but when we, they come to come back, you had to find your own thing. There was a lot of people, people that got really upset over it. In fact, there was one or two people were ill over it. And unfortunately, we uh, lost one lady, a farmer's wife. She uh, collapsed just before they were due to move out. She collapsed and died. There was no, as far as I know, where they said they would find accommodation if you didn't have anywhere to go. But as far as I can recall, everybody had a friend or a relative just outside the area, so they all doubled up, as you may say, for 12 months. Everybody got on with it. We had to do it, and that was that. There was no point saying anything different, was it, really? Well, 
Well, we as kids thought they were great because, I mean, sweets was ration. We hadn't had any sweets worth talking about for ages, and they were keeping us supplied with candy and all the rest of it. And cigarettes at the same time. They had plenty of fakes for the, our parents. And nylons for the women. So there we are. <laughs> Manna from heaven. There were hundreds of American servicemen under canvas around us who were very generous. You know, in, in the morning, a little box on the doorstep, it might have had a piece of ham, always tins of spam, tins of fruit, which we hadn't seen since before the war, cigarettes, um, refreshers for the children. And they were very, very um, generous towards every, everyone. So much so that at the farm opposite, uh, they used to have their waste food, as pigs will. And one day they asked the farmer if he could get another similar bath, and he got a, some, from somewhere a new one. And then each day they would bring almost sides of bacon, chickens, other things in the bottom of this bath, covered with lots and lots of paper for everyone around. I mean, they were, they were generous. And then one night I woke and thought it was a thunderstorm. And the next morning, went up a little lane to the main road. And this was the main Plymouth Tottenham Road. Not a vehicle in sight, nothing whatsoever. And we got used to them all being under camouflage nets, every type of vehicle imaginable. And they have, it has been said that um, their vehicles stretched from Plymouth to Torquay. And then all of a sudden, literally overnight, the only thing left were the tracks in the fields where they'd been. I tell you what I've always stuck in my mind, up the top of the lane from us, there was a lot of barrage balloons going up. And I used to like um, to go up and uh, watch them putting up the barrage balloons. And of course, sometimes one would break loose and you could see it. Uh, you think, oh, hell, if that one wire wrapped around somebody, they'd be in outer space, like, really. But uh, I always remember when the, the, the um, coming up to D-Day, um, my brother and Mike were walking back from school. We went to the school down in Dartmouth. And there was just soldiers everywhere. And, you know, all on the side of the road. And uh, we could look down and see the harbour was absolutely full of um, ships and that like and we were going up and I remember the, the, a couple of soldiers say cool don't I wish we were the, their age you know and I say what you know having to go to school rather than do what you're doing because of course at that age you don't see any fear you know and it's always stuck in me I thought they must have been just right worried of their life but you know and I often wondered how far they got me or whether they made it through really.
Well, of course, when we came back first, we, I think we were about the first ones back in the village. And there was no, nobody, nobody here at all. And uh, <laughs> it was eerie. And, and, and there was rats everywhere, full of rats, it was. Full of rats. Very, very eerie. We actually came back in November. And meanwhile, the area had to be cleared because there was a lot of live ammunition and things lying around. And uh, we had the civil defence to come to see everything was all right. The biggest lot of crooks you ever saw because they whipped all the brass door handles off every door and anything that was movable and saleable, they took it. Well, they were all the chaps who dodged the call up, you see. Quite a few civilians came into the, came into the area. And uh, I think there was a bit of pilfering going on. Because the, 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 well, the one thing that was missing at home was um, when my grandfather.